Hi, I'm Dinah Voiles Culver. I'm the environment writer for the Daytona Beach News Journal and helping cover Dorian for the southeastern region of Gay House Media. The hurricane has finally begun moving. The atmospheric conditions finally started things moving and the hurricane has become a slow but definite northwestward track. That track will take Dorian along the east coast of Florida, maybe 65 to 100 miles offshore, and it will be going northward and then past Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and all along the coast, there are millions of residents still waiting to see what Dorian's going to do. In Florida, where things have become, the picture is a little bit better. The winds are certainly going to be lower. Dorian's now a Category 2 hurricane instead of the Category 5 that it was over the weekend. So the winds are a little lower. The National Weather Service is very concerned that people are going to become complacent about the storm and feel that maybe it won't be as dangerous for them but the winds are still forecast to be high, possibly gusting to hurricane strength right along the coast. There's still a deadly storm surge forecast of perhaps up to six feet or more along the ocean and the intercoastal waterway. Our local emergency management officials in Central Florida are really urging people to continue paying attention to the National Hurricane Center's forecast and also to the forecast that comes out of the individual weather service offices and throughout the region, each weather service office publishes a hurricane local statement. And in that hurricane local statement that's available on their web pages, there are specific details for each area regarding maximum winds, timing the arrival of winds, the storm surge, river flooding, flash flooding, all these other instances that can occur during a slow moving storm like this one. The weather service has also asked people just to stay put stay prepared, watch for the potential that the storm could wobble. The As any time a hurricane is that close to the coast, there's a chance for the storm to just kind of be nudged inward. And with every few miles it nudges inward, it increases slightly the chance for some little higher winds along the coast. And that's something that our local emergency management officials have asked people to really pay attention to. And as has Dorian has begun to weaken, its wind fields are expanding, and those wind, expanding wind fields could put areas in the coast more at risk than they were before. So that's something that the, each of the Weather Service offices will be watching through the Georgia, through the Carolinas, through North Carolina, to see what those wind fields do, how close those intense winds get to the coast. The closer the storm comes to the coast and the wider the wind fields are, it increases the risk. So that is something that all the residents along the coast really need to be paying attention to, be prepared for. People are still going to be needing to decide whether or not to evacuate. If they're facing mandatory evacuation orders in their regions, emergency management officials certainly encourage people to, to leave. It's, it's a tough decision for a lot of people. It costs money. It's hard to take pets. It's hard to take your, you know, pack your family up. So it's a, it's a difficult decision, but the emergency management director in Flagler Beach, Flagler County, just to the north of Daytona Beach, has seen some instances that were very concerning in our last couple of hurricanes with people trapped in homes with rising water and emergency management rescue responders were not able to get to them because the when the winds get to be too high, emergency responders cannot go out and, and conduct rescue calls. And sometimes those 911 calls are haunting. So the emergency management officials encourage you to check with your local emergency management, check with the weather service, know what your storm zone is. If you are in an area that is prone to storm surge, this would be a good time to get out. Dorian is one of those storms that is forecast to have a big impact, localized flooding and storm surge all along the coast as it moves upward and then out eventually out to the Atlantic. So check with your emergency management officials. Know whether you live in a flood zone, whether you live in a storm surge zone. If you've been asked to evacuate, they encourage people to leave. If you're staying in a home, that could be at risk if you have not evacuated. They also advise people to let their loved ones know they're staying behind, to let people know where they are. And if you evacuate, let your family members and friends know where you are, know that you've left so they're not concerned about you. One of the challenges for this storm for professional meteorologists, for academic meteorologists, and for just the average folks who are sitting out there is waiting to see what this hurricane would do 
we put a question up on our Facebook group this morning asking people what they were doing and the responses were kind of all over the map. A lot of people really frustrated, feeling like this storm took a long time to get here and it really did. The forecasters are exploring today what has been happening over the Bahamas. People, the average person who is sitting around, a lot of people say they've already eaten all the hurricane snacks they bought at the store. They're ready to make a run for more snacks. Some people are busy doing crafts around the house. They're studying for schools. They're school testing. And um, some people are still working today. Also, we've talked to people who are preparing to respond in the Bahamas. We talked to a woman who is going to be going back. She's going to go over to the Bahamas to help restore their communications there. So people are finding ways to pass the time. The In Volusia County, it's typically a place where a lot of people hang out at the beach. They go down to the beach. They watch the waves during a storm. The local beach officials are kind of concerned about that. They say the beach is going to be a dangerous place, but still today there were plenty of people down watching the waves roll in because the breakers are getting really big and in some places they're supposed to be over 10 feet. So it's kind of interesting to talk to all the people out there about how they're passing the time while we kind of just are on hold waiting for this thing to roll by at three miles an hour. <laughs> 